Hello everyone. As you know, Moscow is one of the main tourist cities of the world. People come here to see the unique historical architecture with their own eyes, as well as to feel the ancient traditions. There are about 5,000 cultural heritage objects in the capital of Russia. Five of them are included on the UNESCO list. This is the program Capital Ideas Life. I am the host, Mike Gibson. Today, we will tell you about who preserves the cultural heritage of this beautiful city and how they do it. On today's program, world experts in architecture, painting and urban planning in Moscow. Restoration as an art, and art under the protection of restoration specialists. An international symposium on the preservation of cultural heritage. Moscow is one of the world leaders concerning the number of architectural monuments, art collections and cultural attractions collected on the territory of a single city. In 2021, the capital of Russia entered the list of the top three megacities in Europe for the number of cultural heritage sites. Today, such city-wide points of attraction total more than 8,000. In recent years, 504 sites and monuments have been placed under state protection in Moscow. This is more than in any other European city. In addition, hundreds of world masterpieces of art are exhibited in Moscow. The most famous musicians perform concerts here and the best Russian and foreign actors, ballerinas and opera singers perform on theatre stages. People come from all corners of the globe to experience the cultural heritage of the Russian capital. In the first half of 2023 alone, more than a million foreign tourists visited Moscow. The International Council on Cultural Heritage is held annually in Moscow. This year, it was held at the end of November. For five days, Russian and foreign experts, representatives of UNESCO and the government of Moscow discussed issues about preserving the cultural heritage of the capital of Russia. Our next subject is about the most interesting events of this forum. The International Council on Cultural Heritage is an association of leading experts in the field of architecture, art and urban planning from around the world. This year, more than 20 delegates from 12 countries took part in the event. This is a very important event for us because we started the tradition of holding the International Council on Cultural Heritage in 2015. And this is the seventh time the conference is being held. We are delighted that our partners from around the world were able to come here. The geography of participants is constantly expanding. And this time, we have experts from the Philippines, Turkey, Iran, China, Peru, Azerbaijan, Tajikistan, Uzbekistan and Cuba present at the conference. We could go on listing these countries for a long while, but what's most important is that the participation of international experts shows that Russia isn't isolated whatsoever that we are united by common cultural values, a desire to preserve historical heritage and exchange experiences with young people who are very actively involved in our processes of restoring Moscow's historical appearance. Two departments of the Moscow government are responsible for organizing the council, the Department for External, Economic and International Relations, as well as the city's Department of Cultural Heritage. The latter is responsible for the preservation and restoration of art objects, archaeological excavations and even the restoration of historical buildings and structures. For the upcoming year, the capital's budget has allocated more than 48 billion rubles for these purposes. 
in 2024, they plan to spend more than 170 billion solely on the development of Moscow's cultural and tourist environment, which is 46% more than this year. Indeed, Moscow is generally recognized as one of the leaders in Russia for the preservation of cultural heritage. And an idea was taken, a global one. We won't say that we came up with it directly, but this is a so-called ruble per meter program. When an investor can first rent a ruined building from the city, restore it, and then the rent will be one ruble per square meter, i.e. a nominal price, which of course, as we know, is similar to the European one euro per meter program. This is one of the factors that shows why we need an international council. We are, of course, open to any positive experiences that we acquire from communicating with our colleagues. And of course, that means not only those from European countries. Now we are increasingly in contact with both Asian and African countries. The participants of the Council on Cultural Heritage had five days to discuss and search for truths. Over the working week, they were faced with the task of visiting a multitude of city attractions and exhibitions, as well as holding talks, seminars and participating in a scientific symposium. One of the first cultural events awaited guests in a historic building a few blocks from Red Square. We are located in the very centre of Moscow on Misnitskaya Street. This 18th century building houses the Russian Academy of Painting. Outstanding Russian artists such as Isaac Levitan and Konstantin Karovin taught and studied here. Their paintings adorn the collections of the best museums around the world. And today, together with you, we will be able to enter these doors and immerse ourselves in the wonderful world of art. The full name of this educational institution is the Ilya Glazunov Russian Academy of Painting, Sculpture and Architecture. This is one of the main universities in Russia where you can learn drawing, sculpture, architecture and art pedagogy. At the entrance we are greeted by this beautiful painting. By the way, this is the work of one of the students of the Academy. Academy graduates exhibit their works in the world's leading museums of painting and sculpture. In addition, the institution has its own gallery where the best works of teachers, students and artists from the Glazunov family are on display. A tour of the university's exhibition halls marked the beginning of the council participants' acquaintance with the Academy and modern Russian painting. Aside from paintings, the hall also displays sketches created by students. The building in which the educational institution is housed is one of the most striking monuments of architectural classicism in Moscow. Classical music concerts used to be performed in these halls, balls were held and distinguished guests were welcomed. Over time, the building fell into disrepair and only thanks to the painstaking work of Moscow restorers was it able to preserve its magnificent furnishings. It's nigh on a miracle. Right from the time of the Moscow School, from the mid-19th century, two antique reliefs have been preserved in this room. Like the entire building as a whole, they were also in a completely deplorable state. Now, as we see, they've managed to add an expositional look. After the excursion, Delegation participants were awaited by a round table dedicated to cultural heritage. Russian and foreign experts presented colleagues with their most interesting projects. For example, the Italian restorer Luciano Maggi spoke about his work in Pompeii and a representative of the Moscow Department of Cultural Heritage presented one of the world's largest restoration projects, the restoration of the famous Verde Anja. 
Another museum that appeared at the exhibition is one of the branches of the Timuryazev Museum. Accounting for the preservation of the interiors, we were able to recreate the 1954 planning structure, restore the chandeliers, again dating to this period, and restore the historical facade. The rest has been converted to cater to the museum exhibition, the Uzbekistan Pavilion. We have colleagues from Uzbekistan, and it's very important to focus attention also on this pavilion. The pavilion was open to the public recently, and the site was also under restoration for a long time. This is a historical pavilion transferred to Uzbek USSR in 1954, and now it also has been transferred under the representative office of the Republic of Uzbekistan. Students of the Art Academy also took part in the round table. The discussion took place in the form of a live dialogue and anyone could put forward interesting questions to the Russian and foreign experts. We turn from art to architecture. After all, it is a huge part of Moscow's cultural heritage, city trends, modern urban technologies and historical center. These topics were discussed today by experts at the Moscow Architectural Institute. The Moscow Institute of Architecture, or Marquis for short, is located in the building of the estate of Count Vorontsov, built in 1914. In 2018, the building was reconstructed, preserving its original appearance and the historical inscription, Institute of Architecture. In the present day, a symposium of the International Council on the Preservation of Monuments and Landmarks was recently held within the walls of the Moscow Institute of Architecture. The key theme this year was the integration of cultural heritage sites into modern life, as well as construction in the historical parts of megacities. The Council's international delegation took part in the forum's business program. The strategic session was dedicated to redevelopment and the economic efficiency of new construction in a historical urban environment. On behalf of the Russian Ministry of Construction, I congratulate everyone on such a wonderful event, on the second symposium on the preservation of cultural heritage sites and landmarks. Today, a lot has been done this year concerning the subject of legislation in terms of federal legislation on the protection of cultural heritage sites. And we, of course, have defined uniform state requirements when examining cultural heritage sites for major repairs. During the session, Russian and foreign experts spoke about their projects. The central topic of discussion was the integration of transport infrastructure into the historical center. This is one of the trickiest challenges in urban planning, as new routes and equipment must meet strict safety standards for the sake of the fragile historical buildings and structures. When transport infrastructure companies are faced with a historical development or cultural heritage sites, they don't try to fight the monuments, but instead integrate them into their project and make them more accessible and attractive for the urban environment. Our overpass on Komsomolskaya Square, the three-station stop, formerly the Kalanchovskaya stop, with a stopping platform, these are all the projects implemented to date, those that are at the final stage of implementation, at the finishing level. They account for the projects implemented. Today, we are already at the implementation stage of a project, the reconstruction of the overpass on Nizhnaya Siromyadnicheskaya Street, which connects Siromyadnicheskaya Street and the territory of the art play creative space with the preservation of the historical arch. And we have many sites in the pipeline. But what the report detailed was the integration of the warehouses from the 1850s Nikolayev Railway into a new passenger complex for high-speed trains on the Moscow to St. Petersburg line. The capital's experience in developing a complex urban transport system is known all over the world. In the largest megacities, they are studying the city's experience in constructing the Moscow City Railway Ring, the Big Circle Metro Line and the Moscow Metro, and other infrastructure in general. 
Leaders of world capitals highly rate Moscow's experience and try to adopt it. For example, during the recent visit of the Minister of the Government of Moscow, Sergei Cheroman, to Istanbul, the heads of local departments of transport, computer technology, international relations and the general director of the Metro all expressed interest in studying Moscow's experience in the development of urban infrastructure. The following were noted among the key projects. Digitalization of traffic control, integration of suburban and other trains into the Moscow metro system and the creation of transport hubs. Thank you very much for organizing the meeting with your colleagues. We especially appreciate that we can discuss the possibility of deeper industry cooperation, including in the field of digitalization, transport and metro development. And for us, it is very important to develop relations between Moscow and Istanbul, because ultimately this also helps our countries advance further in strengthening our mutually beneficial cooperation on a strategic level. Foreigners show great interest not only in infrastructure solutions and their integration into the city's historical facade, but also in the city's architecture itself, along with the cleanliness and convenience of Moscow. Elisabetta Fabri, an international expert in architecture and honored architect of Italy, shared her impressions of the Russian capital 20 years after her previous visit. Elisabetta, lovely to meet you. Tell me, where have you already visited Moscow and what did you like most of all? The first time I came here was in 2003. I believe that Moscow has definitely changed for the better. The city has become much closer to its residents. If before there were a lot of cars on the streets and pavements, it is clear that all the efforts of the city administration to remove them led to an excellent result. The city has opened up, and this can be felt in the quality of life, the emotions that Moscow conveys. I consider the capital of Russia to be one of the most beautiful cities in Europe. Moscow is one of the world leaders for number of museums and exhibition halls, with more than 440 of them in the city. About 25 million people visited them last year. The capital of Russia hosts close to 500 exhibitions every year. One of them took place during the International Council on Cultural Heritage and the international delegation couldn't help but attend it. In 2023, more than 200 cultural heritage sites were restored in Moscow. Who does this and how they do it, we found out at the Restoration Exhibition. Panel sessions, professional discussions, lectures and presentations, as well as more than 100 masterclasses, all concentrated in one place, and a rather unusual one at that. It was decided to hold the exhibition dedicated to restoration in the historical building of Sutton's Printing House in the center of Moscow. The building is a cultural heritage site of regional significance. In addition, it has one more peculiar feature, no restoration works have been done on it. I watch with great pleasure at how young people enthusiastically engaged in restoration works shared their experiences, communicated with people who would achieve mastery in their art of restoration. An entire generation of people, college and university graduates, all happily involved in this important and necessary work. Naturally, the exhibition will be of interest to specialists and all Moscovites who love and appreciate our past, our culture and, of course, our art. The event brings together industry professionals, material suppliers, developers and design institutes. This year, they were joined by international experts from the Council on Cultural Heritage. Experienced Italian restoration specialists got acquainted with the works of young Russian colleagues and shared their secrets. 
Exhibition participants note that restoration education today is on the rise. Demand for services is growing and new directions are opening in the system of higher and vocational education. An important part of the exhibition program is competitions for young restorers. 53 students from 11 Russian cities competed for the opportunity to complete an internship at the State Research Institute of Restoration. The project Pro Restoration is basically a platform, an international platform. Foreign participants are also involved here. Several Russian regions are participating here where, firstly, there is an exchange of experiences. There is an exchange of some developed technologies here. And this is a great opportunity for young restoration students to learn and to compete with one another. As the leading and, by the way, only research center for restoration in Russia, we take the winners of the competitions under our wing, i.e the people who will be the best specialists in the future. And afterwards, we conduct an internship with them in the areas which they have shown the greatest interest and therefore which they have selected. In total, more than 2,000 cultural heritage sites have been restored in Moscow since 2011. Compared to 2010, the number of the capital's monuments in unsatisfactory condition has decreased by seven times. During the filming of this program, I also took part in some of these restoration works. You know, this is a bus relief from 1954. It was completely lost, lost in the 90s, remaining only in black and white photographs. Our sculptors here first recreated it from clay. The work took 10 months. The sculptors were molding for 10 months, looking closely at old photographs. We look for these photographs in the archives. Now, this is an almost finished intermediary, but almost finished model of the bas relief from the Vedenha Centra Sayus pavilion. Daria here is one of our specialists. She's quite young, but she's been in charge of this bas relief almost from the very beginning. She's making the finishing touches, as we can see. And can I try a little myself? Of course. Here, please take the tools. OK, great. Hello, nice to meet you. May I have a go? Of course. Here, for example, we're going to close up this part. During installation, the shape strengthened because it's heavy. But this drywall screw is interfering with the volume, which is why we'll unscrew it and now we'll seal up this hole here, using gypsum putty, a pallet knife. Good. Please take the solution and put it on this part. This one here. Mm -hmm. Yes, like using a spade, a small spade. Oh, it's dripping. <laughs> so what you need to do is continue spreading it until it levels out completely until the shape fills in. Are you enjoying this interesting project? Of course I am. It's a great, pleasant feeling to touch something of historical value with my own hands. This is directly from Vedenha, isn't it? It was brought here from the pavilion in pieces directly from Vedenha, and it was assembled here. Over several days, the exhibition was visited by more than 15,000 people. Meanwhile, the International Council on Cultural Heritage is completing its work. The last point was the Pushkin State Museum of Fine Arts, with a concert of the best works of classical music. Speaking at today's conference, the mayor noted that by creating this image of Moscow, and we call it the most beautiful city in the world, the very best city in the world. We are also promoting the image of the capital as a hospitable, attractive and comfortable city. And this is why we are seeing positive growth in tourist exchanges and Moscow is ultimately becoming more and more attractive. 
These exhibitions which the experts attended, the round tables which they took part in, exchanging experiences with Russian restorers, they have all showed the relevance of such events. And ultimately, we will continue this good tradition, which is why we will invite our partners to take part in the 8th conference next year. The International Council on Cultural Heritage has ended. This year's programme was very busy. It was interesting for me to spend these days together with world experts, attend various events and tell you about the cultural heritage of the capital of Russia. You've been watching Capital Ideas Life and I'm Mike Gibson. See you in the next programme. Bye.